All right there, Latin 2. Here we are on chapter 32. Uh, I would call your attention to page 39. Several of the chapters, when they give you a lot of cultural information, they will also embed some vocabulary in there as well. So I want to take a look at the vocab on chapter 39 for the glossary first. Um, so here we see um, dinner is cana. Well, actually, you probably can't see it, but <clears throat> it is cana. Uh, so that's dinner. Uh, I know that in Spanish, the word quenar means to dine, to eat dinner. Um, the, yeah, um, and it's a late afternoon meal because you want to get home before dark because it's scary time at dark. Uh, now in the morning you have yentaculum, yentaculum, and that's breakfast. And it's a really, really short, uh, breakfast. It's you grab some food just to get it in your gut, usually leftovers from the day before, Dip it in a little sauce to soften the bread and eat it and get moving on your day. Um, and then the midday meal is the prandium. Prandium. Um, now, pran, uh, it is too much to go into, but dium obviously comes from the word that deals with the day, right? So it's the middle of the day. Uh, so prandium is the midday meal. Uh, again, leftovers are always good. Um, and again, it's, it's get it done, get it quick, um, and, and then, you know, get you through the day. By the way, uh, the Romans absolutely did siesta because it's hot. Uh, in fact, they still do it uh, in Rome. Uh, things shut down for like two, three hours. Um, so it's just, it's just too hot. Okay. Now, normally you'd eat dinner in the atrium if you were rich uh, because it's open air. So all the, the scents don't just get stuck in the house all the time. I don't know if you've ever cooked fish for a little bit too long. It stinks up the house or cooked bacon. It really just stays in the house. This is why some uh, cultures, they actually set up their, uh, their uh, kitchen in the garage. Um, I, I, yeah, just, just a thing that's true. Um, so anyway, the atrium is an open air place. That's also where you end up having your funerals too. A lot of open air type stuff. That's of course if you're rich. Um, otherwise, you would probably have it down in a courtyard or something like that. So then you uh, get to the dining room. It's called uh, the triclinium. Uh, triclinium, like I said last time, is uh, you've got the lecti, uh, which are couches, and you have triple lecti, essentially. And so it's just three couches around a table, and the tables would get brought in with different food on them. So it's almost like a dim sum cart. Uh, and then people would bring their own napkins to dinner because then you would bring food home in those napkins. You bring your own doggy bag. So a napkin is a mapa, mapa, two piece. Uh, and so that's basically how it works. Now, mapa can also mean handkerchief. Uh, it's just, you know, large cloth. So that takes care of that page. Now we're going to go over some of the vocab here, and then the next video will be the rest of the vocab. Uh, so here we've got invitati erant. Invitati erant. Uh, and just translate it as it is, because I'm going to give you the grammar uh, in, I think, the next couple videos. Uh, qua de causa. Uh, this is an idiomatic phrase, which means for this reason, okay? So very often you'll see qui qui quod being used just to emphasize things a little bit more, okay? For this thing that we're talking about, for which reason. Uh, comparo, comparare, comparawi, comparatum. Now this is paro parare, but com in front means emphatically or, or thoroughly. So this means uh, to obtain, to procure, to prepare, like get ready. It means to get all the things necessary. So like when you prepare for someone's birthday party, there's often purchasing involved. Uh, it would be that kind of thing. Uh, this is different than to purchase normally, though. That's that's amo amara. That's specifically the transaction. Comparo is just, you know, it's, it's a larger version of a verb. Uh, holus holeris. This means vegetable. This is a neuter, so beware. Uh, I don't know anything in this. Uh, maybe holistic, but I don't think that's where that comes from. Panis, panis, this is masculine, and it means bread. Uh, and uh, you cook bread in a pan. Uh, and also, I think there's a bunch of different French and Spanish words that deal with this. Uh, so, yeah. Um, pulus, puli, okay, this means chicken. This is where we get the word poultry from. Uh, pulus, puli. Ovum, owi. Uh, notice the plural of this would be owa. And this is a neuter, okay? So the egg is a neuter thing, uh, which is interesting. Now, the arius uh, is where you put that at the end of a word, like a solarium, okay? Uh, or a, 
Well, we saw Raidarius, one who uses that, right? So an Arium is a place to keep these things in. Armarium, okay? It's armory. And Oarium is a place to keep eggs in. Ovary. Uh, so Owa. Also, it's where we get the word oval from. Oval just means egg-shaped, okay? And then the last one uh, is Malumali, and I'm going to stop there. Uh, Malumali means apple. Now, what's fun about this is that also if, if you take the word malum, which is an adjective that turns into a noun, it can also mean an evil thing that happens. And if you think back to just about any movie where somebody's eating an apple, they're the bad guy. Uh, and if you think back to uh, the... Um, my dog is barking. Uh, if you think back to Snow White or you think back to any number of things where an apple is being eaten, it's usually poisoned. Uh, a lot of people go back to the Old Testament, the, the book of Genesis, uh, Garden of Eden, and they think that the uh, fruit that came from the tree of knowledge was an apple, but it's not, uh, which is actually why apples were brought in for teachers, because thank you for the knowledge, but it's not. Uh, there's nothing in there that mentions that it's an apple. It's just a fruit. I like to think it's a passion fruit, because then they notice they were naked. But uh, it's because it is a word that is similar to the word for evil, it got attracted to that, and so forever now, in our cultural milieu, apples are associated with evil. Uh, they're associated with that story in the Bible as well. Uh, so, anyway, just kind of a fun thing. All right, I'm going to hit the button. We'll get to the rest later.